So now we're going to look at um, another use of Mohr's circle when we're talking about absolute max shear stress. So the idea is now that we have the sigma 1 and the sigma 2 and all that pretty stuff um, from our Mohr circle, what can we do with it? All right, so let's say that we have this um, uh, element that we're looking at on this x prime, y prime, z prime axis, and it looks something like this. So the idea is that we can rotate, or not really rotate, but yeah, rotate. We can rotate this 3D axis, and we can look at it in two dimensions, by either looking down the Z, looking down the X, or looking down the Y. So this is what that's going to look like. Okay, and I've kind of had to organize these a little bit different just so you can see them all at once, because I think that would be helpful. So um, ah, come here. I'm going to leave a little bit of space so you can see, but... Over here in the top right corner, um, we've got what it would look like if I was looking down the z-prime axis, so just looking at x and y. Um, and then in the bottom left is what it would look like um, looking down the x-prime axis, so z and y. And then uh, in the last one in the bottom right corner would be if I was looking down the y-prime axis, so the x and the z. And that's why the x is um, to the left is because I'm looking down the positive y. So if we were going to draw the circle of what this would look like, for each of these, um, you would be showing um, that the circle would look slightly different. Okay, and this is what those look like. Okay, so let's look at this one first. So the idea is, this is just kind of the, the picture that we normally see, so that's um, like, I guess, the standard um, Morse circle that you would have put together. Now over here, what we have is what it would look like in the zy axis, and so you would only see this sigma 2 and the, um, the shear stress would be a different value on that face, and then if we were going to max it out. And then the same thing here is if we were looking on the XZ plane, again, all of those values are going to be slightly different. Okay, but what makes this really, really cool is what happens when we put them all on the same graph. Okay, that took a lot longer than I wanted it to because I was trying to get everything to line up and be all pretty. Um, but this should give you the basic idea. So what this means now is if we overlay these circles, the red circle and the green circle from here, because they're both smaller, they fit inside the blue circle. So this circle happens to be the biggest because it goes from zero all the way to sigma one. And then we can fit the other two just right inside. And then it looks something like this. Now, um, what we can kind of tell from noticing here is this dude down here, um, this one is in fact the absolute, um, absolute, I can't spell, absolute max. So that would tell you that if you're looking for the absolute um, max um, shear stress, you would need to orientate, orientate, orient your stuff so that it's in the x, z direction. Okay, so you say, okay, good, I'm done. There's actually, though, a little bit more because if you have a slightly different looking um, piece, then um, kind of messes with how things are lined up. So, like, let's instead pretend that you had something that like, was on the X, Y axis and um, you instead had, like, a negative um, stress. So let's say the sigma 2 was going to be physically negative. Well, hold on, and I'll make this one positive just to show you. If they're both negative, you kind of have a similar thing just on the on the left. Um, but now what's going to happen is whenever you're going to draw in your picture, um, what you're going to see is um, the regular Mohr circle, which I think in this previous case was the green one. So I'll try and show you them both at the same time. So the green circle, which was the original Mohr circle that we had, would have to cross the whole thing Right? because it has to have a positive sigma over here and it has to have a negative sigma 2 over here. Okay, so then that means that if I'm drawing um, the sigma to the, to the 2, which would be the, Z, the zy, if I'm looking at the zy, it would be over here, choop, 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 choop. And then, so this would be the zy max, sorry, yz max, like down there. Um, and then the, the blue one is actually smaller because it goes between the zero and the sigma one. So it looks like this. Man, I'm doing a pretty awesome job of drawing circles. Okay, for me, this is a pretty awesome job of drawing circles. Um, so X prime, Z prime, max. So in this orientation or in this um, particular situation, we have the sigma one is positive and the sigma two is negative. 
then that means your tau x prime y prime is the max here. It's the absolute max. Okay, so it's not that the the blue circle is always going to be um, the max. It just kind of depends on how these circles go. So generally for these problems, what you're going to end up doing is finding where these circles fit and then um, answering the question just kind of based on looking at the, at the circle. Okay?